trying anything new is scary. Even when you think you have all the answers, I think anytime you step out and bet on yourself is scary. And I know a lot of people say that they have a plan A, but you gotta constantly keep tweaking the recipe to make sure that that plan A really works. But on the other side of that fear is great things. What's good? This is your boy Chuck Styles representing the Philadelphia area. I'm here with Tops. This is Project 70. Meet the artist. I was raised outside of West Philly. I was always talented as a kid, like three years old, drawing Peter Pan and Ninja Turtles on my bedroom walls and stuff like that. Didn't get my ass beat though, because my parents saw that, you know, this kid must be nice a little bit. I've always been a creative kid with, with a big imagination, really outgoing, but I never saw myself being an artist. I think that's primarily because at that time, there were no artists doing, you know, professional grand things that creative kids can aspire to. You know, we had Michael Jordan, we had Deion Sanders, we had all these other black legends that we would look at and say, man, I want to be like that. But there was never anybody that looked like that that represented the art community. My uncle owned a barbershop. I always loved to hang around the barbershop scene. And I remember one of my good friends at the time when we were in like eighth grade, he was like, yo, man, we about to go to this party. Yo, you know how I draw Chuck? You might as well just take these clippers and see if you can shape me up. And since there, like, I, I gotta thank my homie Brian, childhood friend from back in the day, cause he was the one that encouraged me to pick up the Clippers. And that took me down the path of wanting to be a barber ahead of wanting to be an artist. But for me, it was synonymous. It was just another way that I could be creative. I spent a good 10 plus years as a professional barber, jacked up a lot of heads on the way, but it is cool because I made up for that. You know, I ended up becoming what some would say is probably one of the best barbers in Philly. Y'all seen Chuck Styles and Art, the original barber artist. Now y'all gonna see why he is the original. Y'all must have forgot. While I was a barber, I learned so much how to carry myself as a man, how to network with all different types of people. And being a barber, being the hub of the community, I had to be neutral and treat everybody equally. I will always draw right in the barbershop, you know, cause like I said, I was jacking up a lot of people's heads. And if you're not the sharpest barber, then you're the loneliest barber and you're sitting for a long time. So I will always sit there and practice my art skills with a sketchbook. And one of my coworkers said, yo man, you need to pursue that. So then I enrolled myself into the Art Institute of Philadelphia and was paying for my college with my own barber money at like 19, 20 years old. But I didn't see that that was the lane that I wanted to get into. So I ended up unfortunately dropping out, but I didn't let that stop me. One of my art instructors told me, it's like, yo man, you don't need a degree to be a great artist. That helped get me through the depression of failure. Cause I said, you know what? I'm gonna still be a successful artist. So even when I continue to hone in my craft as a barber, I will always keep a sketchbook. Then I will even get off of work from working a 10 hour shift and put in five, six hours at home just creating paintings. So a lot of people don't know that side of the story, but I literally worked two jobs equally as hard. So by the time I was 30, I just kind of looked at my life and said, man, yeah, I've accomplished a lot as a barber, but you only get one life. I'm still young enough to start another career and be equally or more successful. And so I stepped out on faith with the support of my wife and my family, and I was able to see how I could craft this art career. For people that don't know who I am, I would describe my style as energetic, emotional, storytelling, conceptual, and a bit of a historian. I try to play around with different concepts and different themes so that I can speak to multiple audiences at once. I don't believe that art should just speak to one audience. 
But I think art should speak to multiple audiences so that it brings everybody together. Everybody can have a conversation. One of my most successful cards in Tops is my Shohi Otani. And that was primarily because I just combined two worlds, which is the gaming world and the sports world. And then both of those communities came together and said, oh man, you play games too? Oh man, you like baseball? That's what it's about. So when people look at my work, you know, I hope that they get a sense of how upbeat and energetic I am through the brush strokes that I use, through the colors that I use, and also just how I'm always just trying to tell a bigger story. So the process of choosing my players, man, I went to the experts on this. I went to my elders that really grew up watching Willie Mays and Hank Aaron, and they're sitting there giving me game about Ernie Banks and Larry Doby. Like, they single-handedly gave me some of those gems that I placed in my roster. And I did not know who any of these people were. And then as I'm researching them, I'm like, oh snap, Larry Doby? doesn't get the credit that he deserves, doesn't get the light that he needs to get shined on him. Second African-American to come into the major league after Jackie, all I knew was Jackie. You know, I didn't know about Josh Gibson, who passed away right before he was allowed to come into the MLB, but was one of the greatest power hitters of the Negro League. So when it comes to picking the players, I started with my family and people that I knew knew more about the sport than me, especially from a historic aspect. And then from there, I started to get into who the current leaders of this day and age are. Using my creative process, I start with finding out who the player is. Not just stats, but like really who the player is. You know, what have they done to give them a bigger significance outside of stats? I usually do a lot of research, a lot of documentaries. I like to tie in pop culture, so I like to research any pop culture references that they were presented in. And then from there, I like to think about what story I want to tell with the artwork. I think the first half of my set, I did a lot of artwork that just was traditional. Then I started to get more comfortable and say, you know what, I need to leave my mark. I need to tell who I am through these cards. And I really love telling stories and bringing that juxtaposition of multiple worlds in one. So I started saying, hmm, how can I tell the story of Shohei Otani and having him look like a hero that he is, that he's perceived in Japan? I'm playing this game right now that is like one of the best games to drop for PlayStation, which is based in Tsushima, which is an island in Japan. Boom, let me figure out how to fuse those two together. So I think I love living in that space of here's the player, here's the concept, how can I fuse the two and tell this never before seen visual story? When it comes to the aesthetics of Chuck Styles, I try to stay consistent for just the purpose of brand awareness. You know, I wanna make sure that when people see it, they know exactly who it is and where it comes from. Now, why I choose the dots and the squiggly lines, I want my art to invoke some type of emotion, some type of energy. I want you to be able to feel it. I'm really big on energy and I'm really big on manifestation. The dot started off as an orange dot and the orange dot symbolized the sun. We get all our energy from the sun. It helps grass grow. It gives us, you know, the vitamin D that we need to keep going. That orange dot was a representation of just good energy. So anytime you've seen that orange dot on my artwork, you knew that good energy was put into this artwork. Now that orange dot has transformed into a green dot or a white dot or a blue dot. And that's more so to go with the color scheme of the artwork. Now the white squiggly lines, I want you to be able to feel it. I want you to be able to feel like a little bit of the rawness of who I am too. So a lot of those design choices just comes from those aspects of my life. To be in this roster with all these tops artists, it's incredible. I was honored, I was humbled. When I first seen the lineup and I first seen the roster and I started seeing the names, I'm not gonna lie, I felt small. But I just was confident in my art and I'm glad that I'm able to build relationships with some of these artists that I might have never heard of before. And I also get to just share space with some of the artists that I've been looking up to. Ron English, Crayola, but just with every creative that's involved, 
I think we need to take this moment and just like realize that we're a part of history. You know, these cars that we're making today will live on for generations. Even when we're long and gone, our cars will be floating somewhere around the earth. And that's something to really take pride in, take a moment and say, man, I shared this historic moment with these incredible people. It's crazy, it's crazy because I'm a Gemini. I'm gonna ask you about baseball. Yeah, let's go. No, we all good. I learned I learned from playing the show. <laughs> Look, man, I'm a Phillies fan because you know, if you in Philly, you better root for the Phillies team or you're gonna get jumped. So it's like <laughs> I am Brittany Palmer. It's King Saladin. This is Gregory Siff. And I'm here with my homies from Tops. And this is Project 70. Project 70. Project 70. Meet the artist. Meet the artist. I don't need a wave. Stay in school. <laughs>